Hello everyone, my name is Caden Herring and I'm a consultant at Encryption Consulting. Encryption Consulting covers all the aspects of the data protection landscape such as encryption, data security, key management, and privacy, and we help clients to understand and implement these uh, principles into their uh, cybersecurity environments. So today we'll be talking a little bit about SHA, the uh, hashing algorithm. Uh, it's widely used uh, in the encryption domain to uh, generate strong hashes, and there's several use cases for it. So let's get into it. Uh, SHA stands for Secure Hashing Algorithm. It's a modified version of MD5 uh, and used for hashing data and certificates. SHA is a type of algorithm used in the hashing techniques. So to understand uh, various algorithms involved in hashing or basics of hashing, uh, refer to one of our previous videos. We go more in depth there. Uh, so this algorithm helps in converting the plain sensitive text uh, to an output hash with fixed uh, and unique lengths. Uh, even a slight change in the data generates a new set of hash, uh, and this helps in verifying the integrity of the data and file. Uh, and there are several variations in the SHA, such as SHA, SHA-1, or SHA-2. So what is SHA? Uh, it's one of the most prominent and used variations of hashing algorithms. Uh, SHA helps in retaining and identifying the integrity of the original message shared. Uh, as shown in the video now, uh, we have a high level of how the SHA algorithm works. <clears throat> so the initial message is hashed with SHA-1, uh, resulting in the hash digest uh, shown in box A. Uh, the next row here, uh, there's a minor modification in the message <clears throat> where H is, trans is changed from uppercase to lowercase. Uh, however, you can see the change in the output hash as mentioned in box B. This is referred to the avalanche effect. Uh, this effect is important in cryptography as it means even the slightest change in the input message completely changes the output, and this will stop attackers from being able to understand what the hash digest originally said and telling the receiver of the message whether or not the message has been changed while in transit. So, when learning about different SHA forms, several different types of SHA are referenced. Examples of SHA names used are SHA-1, SHA-2, uh, SHA-256, SHA-224, SHA-512, SHA-384, but in actuality there's only two types, SHA-1 and SHA-2. The other larger numbers, like SHA-256, are just versions of SHA-2 that know uh, the bit lengths of the SHA-2 encryption. SHA-1 was the original secure hashing algorithm, returning to a 160-bit hash digest. Someone may wonder, can SHA-2 be cracked like SHA-1 though? The answer is yes. Due to the short length of the, of the hash, uh, hash digest, SHA-1 is easily brute forced, uh, but with SHA-2, uh, SHA-2 can still be brute forced, but the keys, uh, the bits, there's more bits in the key, uh, which has a, a greater effect on how, how much they can be brute forced. Uh, another issue of SHA-1 is that it can give the same hash digest for two different values, uh, so SHA-2 improves upon that. SHA-2 can produce a variety of bit lengths from 256 to 512, uh, allowing it to assign completely unique values to every hash digest created. Uh, collisions occur when two values have the same hash digest, though, uh, which means that two different hash, uh, once, once it's put through the algorithm, comes out to the same thing. Uh, compared to SHA-1 though, SHA-2 is much more secure and has been required in, in all digital signatures and certificates since 2016. Common attacks like brute force attacks can take years or even decades to crack it, so SHA-2 is considered one of the most secure hash algorithms. Some benefits of the SHA algorithm with its unique features, it helps in uh, achieving many business use cases in cybersecurity. This will help in providing the integrity for the sender and the receiver. Recently, hashing is widely used in password verification processes, so let's understand some of the prominent use cases involving uh, uh, hashing at a high level. So with password protection, passwords are stored as hashes, uh, generating, uh, ge generated using the SHA algorithm, uh, and it helps in retaining privacy and integrity, because when a user creates a new password, the system calculates a hash for the password, and then stores the hash instead of the password. So later, when the user authenticates by entering a username and a password, the system calculates the hash of the entered password, then compares it to the stored hash, and if they're the same, then it's the correct password. So, and then with application usage, several applications leverage SHA algorithms for generating hash outcomes. 
Uh, the majority of these applications are in networking domains, applications such as SSH uh, and secure multi-purpose internet mail extension, uh, IPsec, uh, all use SHA. Uh, and then with key strengthening, this process increases the strength of the password and protects from attackers such as brute force attacks and rainbow table attacks. Uh, key strengthening techniques add the strength to the passwords by adding further random bits. This will enhance the password strength and provides high security. Uh, two common key strengthening techniques are bcrypt and password-based key derivation function 2. Uh, and we'll discuss these uh, in a later video. And then with message hashing, messages which might not be sensitive but important to maintain integrity are hashed before sending it to end users. This process will provide end users with a guarantee that the sender is genuine and that they can trust the message. And then with compiler operations, keywords of a programming language are processed by compilers and stored using hash tables. To differentiate between the keywords of a programming language, like if, else, for, uh, and other identifiers like that, uh, and to successfully compile the program, the compiler stores all these keywords in a set which is implemented using a hash table. So that brings us to the end of this video. Uh, check out our playlist for some other videos that we have about more specific subjects that were referenced in this video. And if your organization is looking for implementation of any kind of hashing, uh, just consult us at info at encryptionconsulting.com for further information.